want to evaluate the geometric series or state that our series diverges. Our series is k equals 0 to infinity of 1 third to the k. So in this case, r is 1 third and a is 1. We're not multiplying this geometric series by anything out here. It's just 1. And because the absolute value of r is less than 1, that means that our series converges, and it converges to a divided by 1 minus r. So we know that a is 1, and r is 1 third, so 1 over 1 minus 1 third, that's 1 divided by 2 thirds, so that is 3 halves. Here we have the series k equals 4 to infinity of 3 to the negative 2k. So first let's convince ourselves this is a geometric series. So 3 to the 2, negative 2k can be written as 1 over 3 to the 2k, which can then be written as 1 over 3 squared to the k, and 3 squared is 9, so that's 1 over 9 to the k, which can be rewritten as 1 ninth to the k. So this series can be rewritten as k equals 4 to infinity of 1 ninth to the k, which definitely looks geometric. So to determine if this geometric series converges, there are a couple ways we can go about doing this. First, we should notice that this series starts with k equals 4, not 0. So what this means is that our series, when we write out some terms, looks like 1 ninth to the 4th plus 1 ninth to the 5th plus 1 ninth to the 6th, and so on. If we factor out a 1 ninth to the 4th from each term, we can rewrite this as 1 ninth to the 4th times 1 plus 1 ninth plus 1 ninth squared, and so on. So now this series is the series k equals 0 to infinity of 1 ninth to the k. And this is a geometric series with r equals 1 ninth and the absolute value of r is less than 1 so it converges to a over 1 minus r which in this case a is 1 and r is 1 ninth so it converges to 1 over 1 minus 1 ninth so that means that this series equals 1 ninth to the 4th times 1 over 1 minus 1 ninth, which we can rewrite as 1 ninth to the 4th times 9 eighths, which can be rewritten as 1 over 8 times 9 cubed, which is 1 over 5,832. Now there's another way that we can go about finding the sum of this series. If we start with our series, k equals 4 to infinity of 1 ninth to the k, we can shift the index using our substitution. So to do that, we want i equals 0 to represent k equals 4. So we're going to let k equal i plus 4. So that means that the series is now written as the series from i equals 0 to infinity of 1 ninth to the i plus 4. And using the rules of exponents, we can rewrite this as the series from i equals 0 to infinity of 1 ninth to the 4th 
times one ninth to the i. So now we have that a equals one ninth to the fourth and r equals one ninth. So this converges to a which is one ninth to the fourth over one minus r and r is one ninth and this also equals one over five thousand eight hundred thirty two as it should so that's another way that we can go about finding the sum of our series and we have one more option again starting with our series k equals four to infinity of one ninth to the k we could write this as the series k equals zero to infinity of one ninth to the k and then subtract off the first four terms so we're subtracting off one over one plus one ninth plus one ninth squared plus one ninth cubed So now we have this geometric series and the sum is one over one minus one ninth and then we're going to subtract off one plus one ninth plus one ninth squared plus one ninth cubed and that will also get us to one over five thousand eight hundred and thirty two. So these are three different ways that we can think about how to find the sum of a series where the sum doesn't start at zero. We want to write the, this decimal as a geometric series and express its value as a fraction. So we have 0 0.07 repeating which is 0 0.07, 0 0.07, 0 0.07 and so on. So this looks like 0 0.07 plus 0 0.0007 plus 0 0.000007 and so on which we can rewrite as 0 0.07 plus 0 0.07 times 1 one hundredth plus 0 0.07 times 1 over 100 squared and so on. So we can write this as the series from k equals 0 to infinity of 0 0.07 times 1 over 100 to the k. Here we have the series k equals 0 to infinity of 3 times 2 to the negative k. So first let's convince ourselves that this is the geometric series. So we can write 2 to the negative k as 1 over 2 to the k, which can be written as 1 half to the k. So that means that this series is really the series from k equals 0 to infinity of 3 times 1 half k. So we see that this is a geometric series where a equals 3 and r equals 1 half. So since r is 1 half, the absolute value of r is less than 1, so our series converges and it converges to a over 1 minus r. So a is 3 and r is 1 half, so 3 over 1 minus 1 half and that is 3 divided by 1 half which is 6 so our series converges to 6 we want to evaluate the series from k equals 1 to infinity of the quantity k divided by k plus 1 minus k plus 1 over k plus 2 so let's look at what the series will look like by writing out the first few terms it's going to be 1 divided by 2 
minus 2 divided by 3 plus 2 divided by 3 minus 3 divided by 4 plus 3 divided by 4 minus 4 divided by 5 and so on. So you might see that these, some of these terms are canceling out and think that this equals one half. But this series does not equal one half. We need to be careful and we need to look more closely at our partial sums. So let's look at the first partial sum. The first partial sum is one half minus two thirds. The second partial sum is one half minus two thirds plus two thirds minus three fourths. So our nth partial sum is one half minus two thirds plus two thirds minus three fourths and so on plus n minus one over n minus n over n plus one plus n over n plus one minus n plus one over n plus two. So we see some of our terms will cancel and we'll be left with our first term and our last term. So s of n equals one half minus n plus one over n plus two. Now we're going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n. So the limit as n goes to infinity of one half minus n plus one over n plus two. And this limit, so this equals one half minus one, which is negative one half. So that means that our series from k equals one to infinity of k over k plus one minus k plus one over k plus two equals negative one half and converges. We can also note that k divided by k plus one minus k plus one over k plus two, if we found a common denominator, we could rewrite this as k squared plus two k minus the quantity k squared plus two k plus one, all divided by k plus one times k plus two, and that equals negative one divided by k plus one times k plus two. So we could rewrite this series as the series from k equals one to infinity of negative one over k plus one times k plus two, which equals negative one sixth minus one twelfth minus one twentieth and so on. So this note will be helpful later on when we'll start with a form that looks like this and is one fraction and use partial fraction decomposition to re rewrite it as a telescoping series. Here we have the series k equals three to infinity of four divided by four k minus three times four k plus one. Looking at this series, we see that there is a product in the denominator. So it looks like this could be rewritten using partial fractions into two separate fractions. So looking at that, we have four divided by four k minus three times four k plus one equals a over four k minus three plus b over four k plus one. So then we have a 
times 4K plus 1 plus B times 4K minus 3 has to equal 4. A times 4K plus A plus B times 4K minus 3B equals 4. Now we split this out into a system of equations, things without k and things with k. So 4a times k plus 4b times k has to equal 0 because there's no k term over on the right side. And a minus 3b has to equal 4. So we have 4a plus 4b equals 0 and a minus 3b equals 4. So a plus b equals 0. So that means that a equals negative b and if we plug that into our other equation then negative b minus 3b equals 4. So negative 4b equals 4 and b equals negative 1. Since b equals negative 1, that means that a equals positive 1. So we can rewrite this as, using partial fractions as the series from k equals 3 to infinity of 1 over 4k minus 3 plus negative 1 over 4k plus 1. So now we have a telescoping series. If we look at the nth partial sum, we get 1 over 9 minus 1 over 13 plus 1 over 13 minus 1 over 17 plus 1 over 17 minus 1 over 21 and so on plus 1 over 4 times n minus 1 minus 3 minus 1 over 4 times n minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 4n minus 3 minus 1 over 4n plus 1. So terms are going to cancel out and we're going to be left with s sub n equals 1 ninth minus 1 over 4n plus 1. So now we want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 ninth minus 1 over 4n plus 1 and that equals one ninth. So our series converges to one ninth. Here we want to determine if the series from k equals zero to infinity of inverse tangent of k minus inverse tangent of k plus two converges or diverges. So looking at the nth partial sum, that would be inverse tangent of 0 minus inverse tangent of 2 plus inverse tangent of 1 minus inverse tangent of 3 plus inverse tangent of 2 minus inverse tangent 
of 4 and so on plus the n minus 1 term would be inverse tangent of n minus 1 minus inverse tangent of n plus 1 plus inverse tangent of n minus inverse tangent of n plus 2. So a lot of these terms are going to cancel out and we'll find that we are left with s sub n equals the inverse tangent of 0 plus the inverse tangent of 1 minus the inverse tangent of n plus 1 minus the inverse tangent of n plus 2. So then we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n. So we're looking for the limit as n goes to infinity. Inverse tangent of 0 is 0. Inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. Minus inverse tangent of n plus 1 minus inverse tangent of n plus 2. Now the limit as n goes to infinity of inverse tangent of n plus 1 and n plus inverse tangent of n plus 2, those are both pi over 2. So we get the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n is 0 plus pi over 4 minus pi over 2 minus pi over 2 which is negative 3 pi over 4. So that means that the series from k equals 0 to infinity of inverse tangent of k minus inverse tangent of k plus 2 converges to negative converges to negative 3 pi over 4.